What is going on guys? This is Patagonia at its finest right now. We are leaving Torres del Paine National Park, Laguna Marga. Look at those reflections. Unbelievable. And uh, today's video is going to be all about the El Chelten area. So uh, let's hit the road. It's like a seven hour drive to get there. And hopefully the weather and conditions stay like this because it's, yeah, it's kind of all right. Okay, after a long drive uh, across the Pampas, we have made it to uh, El Chalten. And our first stop here is uh, Chirillo del Salto. It's a waterfall that's set in this awesome spot amongst all the fall colors. We're not quite at peak fall color yet in Argentina, but it's really, really close. Lots of oranges popping up, lots of yellows. And uh, yeah, this place is dramatic any time of year. So let's uh, see if we can find a photo. So we got to the waterfall and my buddy Colby Brown has a group here as well. So there's a lot of photographers here. Not that that's a problem at all. It just means that maybe I won't photograph the classic thing. In fact, I have half a mind to try to harness my inner Simon Baxter and try to photograph some trees or some woodland or something. I'm just really not good at that, but I do see this dead tree through this open path with all of this color around it and i think that could make a photo so i think if you're if you have the eye for woodland there's probably some photos here i just have to be brave enough to take the leap and take you know just make that effort to take these photos so am i gonna forget about the waterfall maybe i did try a photo of the white branches but i tried to simplify the composition I'm not sure it works, but what do you guys think? This is where bravery comes into photography for sure. <laughs> because I think I'm an okay photographer, but I've never ever tried woodland photography. And I have a photo that I know is good, but I wanna try something different, something I've never done. I've never done woodland photography. It doesn't, it's something that, I guess it's not that it doesn't appeal to me, it's just something that I've been afraid to try to do because I'm not good at those detail things and I guess you kind of need practice. So I'm about to harness my inner Simon Baxter. Sorry, Simon, because I'm about to not do your work justice. I walked down the creek to see if there was a way to incorporate the water into the woodland. So much of my photography is based around water. Doesn't it make sense to add water to my woodland photos? However, I just couldn't make it work. So bravely, I left the creek behind me and walked right into the density of the forest. So there's no shortage of really cool trees in here. It's absolutely beautiful. But one of the things I think that I'm looking for in here is something that stands out as different. I think when you're doing woodland photography, you're looking for whatever thing feels like it doesn't belong or whatever stands out. Maybe a dead tree or a big tree or a species of tree that, you know, is surrounded by other trees. And I just haven't found that yet. I've been walking for about a half an hour. I found some awesome stuff, but nothing that makes a great photo. So I'm uh, starting to get anxious because I want to deliver a photo and I, don't, I haven't seen a photo yet. One of the signs of growth in a photographer is understanding the difference between seeing cool stuff and seeing a photo. And understanding that the two aren't mutually inclusive. I've been walking around for over an hour now and I haven't found anything. <laughs> There's so many like close to photos or oh that could be a photo and then I'll spend five minutes you know walking around it and it's just doesn't have that impact or that power or something's just missing. I found this tree and I thought this tree looks really cool and it's got a background. One of the things about being in the woods is if you get the sky, it kind of ruins the photo. So I'm looking for things that don't have the sky. 
I thought this meets the criteria, but it's very, very messy on the foreground and the tree is almost too big. And then on the opposite side, over here, you have this really beautiful, almost Japanese looking tree. I don't know what that means. Like those little tiny trees that take ages to grow. It kind of looks like that. And it looks nice, but as a photograph, again, it just kind of looks messy. And I need to find something that doesn't look messy. Something that has, I think that like stands out so much that your eye is just drawn to it. And so far I have not found that. So I'm gonna keep walking, but I'm starting to have a whole lot of appreciation for woodland photographers because it's not easy. Here's the image of that tree. After processing it, I don't think it's that bad but it's still missing a bit of impact. I've switched to a 14 to 35 millimeter lens to try to change my perspective because I'm frustrated is the wrong word. I'm not frustrated because I'm just not finding anything. I'm exploring and I'm having a lot of fun with it I'm just really wishing I would find something. <laughs> I'm impatient, not frustrated. Uh, it's just weird being surrounded by all this awesome stuff and not being able to find something that you want to photograph. So I'm going to keep looking and hopefully the wider angle will change my mind's perspective. One of the great skills of great photographers is being able to see what your camera and lens see. By changing my lens wider, it allows my mind to think bigger. So as I wander through the woodland hunched like a velociraptor looking for prey, I'm trying to think bigger. Okay, so this is how hard this is. I found an awesome tree. This tree has these wicked branches that lead out that way. It's kind of awesome. There's fall colors all around it. But woodland photography, is about perfection, about compositional perfection. And there's no compositional perfection to this tree. Uh, when you line it up this way, you have this blown out background. It won't work until dark or maybe not ever. At least totally different light. Over here you have these really beautiful branches that lead down the trunk back that way. But again, you've got that heavy backlight to deal with and the tree just lines right into the hilltops in the back. And it's just, just not right. There's just always something off. And I've been walking around it constantly, just trying to find that perfect composition. And I think sometimes it just doesn't exist. Sometimes there just isn't the perfect composition for what seems like a perfect tree or a perfect bit of woodland. So I might keep walking, but I'm starting to run out of daylight. I love this tree so much, I couldn't give up on it. So I kept on working it, and eventually I found this photo. And even then, I kept working at it some more. Okay, I'm gonna try something that's basically entirely out of desperation because I just haven't found anything else. And I'm at that same tree I just talked about walking around, and I've literally stuffed my camera into some branches. And this composition, if the branches weren't here, would be awesome. I think it would finally be the image I'm trying to make, but the branches are here. So I'm trying to maybe use them somehow and definitely controversial because it's uh, totally against everything in photography. You've got basically all this distracting stuff in the front and I'm doing three photos, one of the foreground, one of the midground, and one of the background and I'll blend them I believe. On the back of the camera, it looks artistic. <laughs> I don't know if it looks good, but it looks like, it looks like I'm, I'm at least trying. So <laughs> chalk this up as one photo I've at least tried. I don't know if it'll work or not. I don't know if it looks good, but at least I tried. I decided not to blend the photos in the end and just use the background focus. But does it work? Not really, but maybe? Okay, it's almost sunset, so I'm running out of time. <laughs> and I'm pushing a new theory, which is just walk and then set up your tripod and look through the lens in all directions, then walk and do the same thing. And that has led me kind of halfway up this hill. And 
Uh, this image isn't great, but it's soft and colorful, and it's an image. I've been finding that if I go to square crop, it's really helped me in here. So I've been messing around with some square crop images, trying to keep things simple. Being less picky about what's in the frame and just trying to capture the forest. And I think that's definitely helped a little bit. Still struggling, but the light has come down, which has helped. And the fact that I'm caring less has also helped. As I simplified the process of photography, images started to pop off my shutter. I found a tree stump in the middle of the fall colors. Then, I loved the way the branches of this tree bent down to earth. Nothing too dramatic, simple, but they work. I also found it helpful to try to find juxtaposition. Here, a full tree and the stump of one subtly off to the right. And eventually, I found my gold mine. I love the way the light bounces through this image of red and white. And finally, I decided to try to make an image my own. I used the wind and a long exposure to make my favorite woodland photo ever. Not, I'm just running around taking pictures of everything now <laughs> and hoping that something comes out. I think that the moral of the story isn't that I'm a bad photographer, that I can't do woodland photography. The moral of the story is that woodland photography takes a ton of commitment and it can't just be rushed over a two hour period. You need to train your eye to be a woodland photographer, to find things in the woodland that work. I don't have that trained eye, but I think I could get there. I will also say woodland photography is a lot of fun because you get out in nature, you wander through the woods, and you just explore. And I absolutely love that. So maybe it's something I'll try again in the future. Or maybe, based on the images I took today, you never want me to do it ever again. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!